in an effort to make sure that every aspect of your life is paperless, I am trying out applications from note-taking applications, mind mapping, PDF readers, you name it. In today's video, I will be reviewing a journaling application called Day One. Hey guys, it's Rob Sipek with Paperless X, a channel that is all about digital productivity. If you're new to my channel, hello. Make sure you subscribe if you're looking for solutions to go paperless with your work, studies, and business. And if you're already subscribed, make sure you turn on your notifications so you know each time I release a new video. Day One is a subscription app. You can download it for free on App Store, but it comes with an in app purchase. The version I am reviewing is the premium version for plus users. On App Store, it costs $4 a month. The application is available on iPhone, iPad, Mac, Apple Watch, and Android. They also mention a web application that I've not encountered yet. This subscription covers access to the application across all these devices and your application syncs using day one sync which makes sense since they offer the application on android as well they can't use icloud for syncing to create a new journal go to start a new journal you can then name your journal describe it choose a color for it and you can decide what inscription you want. Particularly important if you want to sync your journals on multiple devices. Encrypting your journals will offer that extra layer of protection to your information. You can turn on the option to see on this day in the application, which is something I will get into in detail a bit later. The color you choose for your journal will be the color you see on your journal name and also your user interface when you open that journal. When you tap your journal, you are taken to this workspace. On the left, you have a sidebar. To create a new entry, tap on this plus icon at the bottom here. You can choose to respond to that day's daily prompt, which is a simple question to ask you simple things to get you started with your journaling. Or you can use your last used template. If you use a template a lot, you can just easily access it because it will be here. Or you pick a completely new template from the app's template library. You have templates on day summary, daily plans, daily self. I love the fact that this application has a lot of templates. So if you're having a hard time starting journaling, this could be a good way to start. And the great thing about this is that you can edit them to your liking. You can add things to them. You can remove things if you don't like the templates that they're giving you. Suppose for some reason none of these templates really work for you, you can create your own from scratch. You can add photos, videos, scans, audio files, drawings and text to your journals. Let's create a new diary entry and see how all these come together to give you an amazing paperless journaling experience. Digital journaling, in my opinion, is like social media posting, just with less comments and less likes from the public, of course. The top of my entry has the date. It has today's date when I'm creating this journal. You can tap on the date to see different information about your entry, like location, tags, the date you created your entry and the last date it was edited, weather, which works if your location is turned on. The application tells you the temperature for the day and whether it was sunny or partly cloudy, that sort of thing, very basic. You will get information on the device that you used to create the entry, what you were doing when you created the entry, and you also get your step count if your device has a motion processor. This is my favorite feature, music. The application can fetch music you are playing on your device when you write. I love it. So when I used to journal on paper, I always mentioned what music I was listening to because I feel like it helps me understand the atmosphere that I had while I was writing. Let me know what your favorite feature is in this application if you're already using it. You can export the entry view it as a pdf or as plain text you can move it to a different journal
you can share a card of your entry this i don't get i am still traditionalist as far as journaling is concerned i have this for my eyes only attitude so i'm not sure why i would want to create a card from my journal to share it with the world you can format your text in your entries with these options here at the top i wish these formats were labeled h1 h2 h3 that is just the standard for text editing of course they each show the different formats that they have but labeling all of them a a it doesn't work it's really not registering in my head and i just feel like it'll be so much easier if these had different labels even a b c d would have been a better way to name these their formats are not even that different. Maybe we should have the ability to customize our own templates uh, for different headings. You can make your text bold or italic. You can add numbered lists. Unnumbered lists. Or interactive lists. I love it when interactive lists strike out my completed tasks. It gives me a sense of achievement. You can add codes, codes, and rule lines. I do wish we could format our text in this editing window, at least increasing the font size and playing around with it a little bit more is very basic customization that should be on this window because changing my font size in the settings, in the application settings is not very convenient. Neither is having one text size throughout my entry. Something to variate the text would be very useful and I think it's necessary. And you can't even change the color of your text in this application. You only have one color to choose from, which is red, and it might not be everyone's favorite color. You can add attachments to your entries. You can access your photos by either taking a photo yourself or adding a photo from your library. More control of our images would be nice. At the moment, you can only view the photo in a separate window. In that window, you only have access to the information on the photo. You can export that particular image or you can delete it. This is not a lot of customization for photos, especially for a journaling application. I would love to see some rotation of images. Resizing of your images would be very useful. I also would like the application to add some photo annotation. Annotating photos in this application would be great. I can cut and copy the image or add new media to the group. When you add more media to the group and you add more photos, the application creates this beautiful collage for you. It looks decent enough and you can play around with the images and move them around to your liking until you have the look you want. You can add videos as long as they are less than five minutes long. You can add as many videos as you like. So the application doesn't limit the number of videos you add. It also doesn't seem to limit the size of videos that you add. It limits the length of your video, which is very interesting. You can add audio files and the application can transcribe the audio to text for you. I don't really understand why you'd want to transcribe audio in a journaling application. The reason why we've been writing conversations in journals is because our paper doesn't record audio. But now, if I can record the audio or record the video and put it in my journal, then why should I transcribe it? I don't understand. You can add drawings or handwritten notes to your journal entries. Apple Notes tools are great for drawing. There is no lag in the application. The tools function really well and they're really great for drawing, especially the pencil is great for drawing if you know how to, which I clearly don't. Personally, for me, this is not going to be useful because I journal on my phone. When I reviewed Journey, if you've not seen that video, I will link Journey to the description down below because if you don't like subscriptions, Journey is a very good alternative. I mentioned in that video that I journal on my phone on the go. This is not going to be something that I use, but if you're going to be using your iPad for journaling, then you have the privilege to add handwritten notes and drawings to your journals. You can access the app settings through the settings icon. The name of your journal is written in big bold letters. This is especially useful if you have multiple journals. You don't want to be talking about your heartbreak in a fitness journal. That is simply unacceptable. So this will help you to just bear in mind and remember which journal you are writing in. If you want to edit your journal, just simply tap on this title and you can access all your options to customize your journal to your liking. 
Beneath the title, you get a camera icon, an audio one, and another one for creating a new entry. These help you to quickly get started in the application. If you want to quickly start creating an entry, you can use these icons. The camera icon will get you quick access to your photos. The audio recording one will allow you to record audio. So these are just quick if you don't want to first create an entry and then add an attachment. You can just start with the attachment right from the side by here. You can get a quick summary of your journal entries, the number of entries you've made in the journal, media you've added to it, number of days you've journaled in that journal, streaks you've received for the journal, entries for this week, places you've journaled from, tags, videos, photos and audio files that you've added to that journal. This is where you find all your entries in this journal and below that you can decide how you want them presented. This is a timeline presentation of your journal entries. Your old entries will be at the bottom and your newest entries at the top. The most recent entry that you've written in your journal will be the one at the very top. You can choose to see thumbnails of your media. You can view all the thumbnails at once or individually as specific types of media, which are your photos, videos, audio files, or PDFs. You can view your map where you've been when creating your entries. And lastly, you can view your calendar to see which days you created entries for. This is the homepage of the application. On the homepage of the application, the only active part is the sidebar. Streaks are rewards you get each time you create an entry. If you find that sort of thing inspiring, you will love this because it will definitely inspire you to write more. The activity feed is a quick summary of your day. It tells you where you were on a particular day and what you did. This feature has access to your Apple calendar. You obviously decide which calendars you give it access to and it also has access to your photos. This information is automatically collected by the application and you don't have to do anything extra. Personally, I like the idea of my application keeping track of where I was. I don't have to do anything for this information to be added, but some people might find this concerning. So for your calendars, if you have a meeting in your calendars, for example, the application will tell you, it will calculate how much time you spent on particular tasks and on particular things that were in your calendar. You do have the option to remove all your location data if you want. If you have issues with sharing that much information with your application, you can turn off access to the information, your location history, your photos and your calendars and the application won't have anything to share with you. Actual more. On this day notifies you of entries you made on this day in the past, which lets you revisit your past. This is definitely my least favorite feature in every journal because personally, I write to forget. I hardly go back to my diary entries because they either sound lame or they're not always my proudest moments. Theoretically, I'm supposed to be able to remove uh, past entries from my timeline here. The application indicates that I should be able to do that, but the application doesn't actually remove this timeline thing. You can decide which journals give you a blast from the past, which I think is quite decent. Mm, not excited about that. Not excited at all. That feature is my least favorite feature. Let me know what is your least favorite feature in your journaling application. Here on the right are my entries from the past. I can click on any of them to read them. I can use these three dots here on the upper left corner of this window to filter the timeline, view PDF, export plain text, view the plain text, or export JSON format. Filtering timeline allows you to quickly look at the dates around this time. You can use these arrows to navigate back and forth from this date. The application then gives you a quick summary for that particular day, which is the media you added, places you were, tags, videos, photos, audio files that you added on that particular day. If there are any entries on that day, they will appear here at the bottom, or you can open them by simply tapping them. The application also keeps track of all the entries you have created in the application under all entries, entries you have in each journal. You can edit your journals. Selective Sync lets you select journals you want on that device. So if I wanted my trial journal on my iPad, I can deselect the rest. This means that only the changes I make to my trial journal will be synced to this iPad. The other journals that I am not syncing remain in the cloud. They are available on other devices. If I ever download the application on a different device, then those journals will be available 
This feature is only available if you are syncing your entries across your devices. If you turn off syncing, then this feature will no longer be available naturally. I think every journaling application should have the option to turn off syncing completely. I personally think it's more secure. I like the idea of having a local storage of my journal. I would rather risk losing my journal entries when I lose my phone or accidentally deleting them than having them on a cloud service. The settings in the application allow you to customize your app to your liking. You can enable or disable syncing of your diary entries across devices. Day one connects to a lot of applications, a lot of social media platforms, and this is really great and it makes for an awesome experience if you want to bookmark things in your journaling app from different social medias. So the application will connect to Spotify, Facebook, YouTube, Todoist, Instapaper, Instagram, Fitbit. You can choose the font you want for your text. Sadly, the application doesn't support custom fonts. That would have been really awesome, but you have a decent number to choose from. You can select the font size you prefer and that will be set throughout your application for all your entries. You can set reminders for daily prompts. The application has two options and two sets of notifications that it has. You can turn on notifications to get a random notification during a certain period of time of the day. Or you can have a more specific reminder set for your journal. So you can add a custom message to yourself. And you can choose how often this reminder will repeat itself. So it could be daily, could be on particular days. Add tags to your prompt and choose the journal that you want to receive this prompt in. So you could just want this for one particular journal and not for all your journals. And finally, you decide which prompt, which template to use. And I think this can be quite useful for those of you that are very busy and you forget to journal and you just want that gentle reminder to journal for the day. You can email journal entries to yourself using a unique email address that the application generates. So if you found yourself away from your devices, but you really want to journal every day, you could do it from a friend's laptop. You can still continue to journal even though you don't have access to your devices. You can set settings for your passcode, enable touch or face ID how long the application needs to wait before it requires you to put in your passcode. I would say immediately is quite decent. Unless, of course, if you don't mind people reading your journal, you can be cool about this and not require the application to have a passcode at all. You can export your journals by picking which journals you want exported. You can choose to export entries from a certain period or specific tags or even exclude specific tags. So you have a lot of control on what you export, what you share out of the application. You export your journals as JSON, plain text, or PDFs. And for your PDFs, you can select the dimensions of your journal, three dimensions to choose from. And you can also choose the layout for your PDF by turning off some options and things you don't want exported in your PDF. I love the fact that my exports are easily accessible in the application right below these export options. When you delete your journals, they get permanently deleted and there's no way to recover your deleted journals or deleted entries. This is something that they need to work on and give us the ability to at least restore journals and entries that you delete. It's always a good idea to be able to restore your deleted files in any application. Day one is the best journaling application on the market if you don't mind paying the monthly subscription. As usual, I'd like to know what journaling solution you're using for your paperless journaling or your digital journaling. I hope you guys liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Let me know what you guys think about day one in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.